Zier. So taking away like two strong points, and I like what JD Gamer are doing. In the pregame, we said that uh, FPX banned out so many different junglers uh, from JD Gaming, it looked like they were trying to defend Beichuan against, uh, Bei against the invade. So I like this Braves early pickup coming in for Kanavi. Yeah, it's his most played champion of the split with six games. This will be his seventh, but he's only won two out of those six. He's got a 33% win rate, so uh, not been the greatest of picks for him in, historically, especially not in this season, but we'll see if he's able to make anything else work Sweet. with it. We have to see the Aphelios and Thresh and the Grays. This is far better coming out from JDG. Let's go. This is a draft that I want to see. Uh, what? Uh Oh my god. So, seriously? Two Karthuses, what does it mean? <laughs> Two Karthuses, what does it mean? I don't think Karthus is <laughs> a great not something I expected. <laughs> I don't think he's a great matchup, but I don't under I I like that from what I've noticed from the very small sample size we have from Beishuan is that he plays AP junglers almost exclusively. He plays Nidley, he plays Echo, he plays Karthus, he plays you know, like Talia, he plays these things that are just almost all. I'm actually gonna look at the stats very, very quickly, but I'm pretty sure he has only played AP junglers uh, in the split played, so far. Uh, he's also played Hecarim, so not purely AP jungles. I, I know Damn. that off the top of my head, so it's not gonna happen that way exactly. But this is a very interesting card, this big. I think FPX are saying, you know what? Sometimes we can't take the 5v5, but we what we can do is we can drag it out to late game. So in late game, Karthus is almost a guaranteed card. It, even if you're weaker at 5v5 team fights, Karthus is going to take you to the promised land just because he scales so well and his damage is unavoidable. Now, uh, coming in from JD Gaming side, I like what they are doing. It's hyper carry, and now you just have to fill out with the front line. FBX read this correctly. They have lost to too many Scions, so they're going to take the Scion and Orn away in draft. There's a lot of top lane bans here. You can see a lot of the ones that you would say are, well, I suppose Kled more of a mid lane than a top lane, but Renekton, the the Scion, the Orn, the Gnar still being left up. And this is something that we said isn't great blind picked when there's, when there's so much focus towards these top lane champions. You can pick it and there's not really a huge amount of answers now to this Gnar. You could go with the Gangplank for Zoom, uh, but again, Zoom hasn't middle. really looked amazing these days. So I'll be curious to see what he wants to go for. Yeah, I, I, I actually prefer the Camille over the game plank just because I think Camille gets a little bit more... Uh, it, it's it's easier to invade on the enemy side jungle. And against a Karthus, you definitely want to be going in and disrupting things. So they're not going to go for GP necessarily, but it's going to be Aatrox, which is a much better frontliner. We have talked about this. Uh, Zoom actually takes the most damage as a top laner out of anyone in the LPL. He has 30% of his team's damage taken, and it's mainly been because of that World's Ender and Gore Drinker uh, Aatrox that he's so fond of. It's a bit of a countered matchup in the top side. Nar definitely has the priority and has the shove, uh, has better trades against Aatrox early game, but in team fights, Aatrox can still do a very good job at, uh, at frontlining. Well, this is another pick that I... I, I don't really like from the solo lanes coming out. This is going to be uh, Syndra. Syndra currently sitting below 30% win rate in the LPL. It's uh, it's a priority pick that, you know, I understand if you want to punish the enemy jungler, then you can go for this. Yes! Yes! Finally! Sorry, I had to no, cut no, across go, you. Go the on, Nocturne mid. The Nocturne mid. I am so... Damn excited I was about to drop an F-bomb and I didn't really want to do it, but I am so damn excited for this. I love this pickup into something like a Syndra. You can spell shield the, the, the stun, that's uh -huh. just like a laning phase thing, but if you're able, to, because of the way they've changed this queue about two patches ago, you get such an early clear, so your whole premise is right. You push in the wave, you look to roam. Now you have double globals, Karthus and Nocturne. That's going to be so much pressure that you can just create anywhere on the map. You could have Beishuan up in topside, he could wreck Rheum, and then Doombi could go bot. You could get you know, ganks on both sides. I love this. There's so much from from FX's composition. A much more creative draft coming out from their end. I still think there's a bit of weakness early on uh, in the Graves versus Karthus matchup. So they have to protect that very well. But as you were saying, that the, when the Globals come in, the level six is going to be massive. You look at that bottom side, it is Rel, it's Kaisa, and then you have two people flying in. Uh, Karth is not exactly flying in, but he sends his regards anyway. So that <laughs> well, bottom lane is—he's floating. Be a part. That's technically flying. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have legs. I wonder but if he does. I don't think he does. I think that's the whole point. I think he's just a spectral being. But honestly, I love. I, so just to bring us back to you know uh, 
what we would expect from JDG. Much better draft. We're not super fond of the Syndra pick. It's kind of been a, a red herring similar to the Graves in the LPL. Specifically, hasn't really had a great win rate. But I like that this composition has a far better uh, or far clearer understanding of what it wants to do. You want to get Loken, you know, stacking up with items onto this Aphelios. You want to try and get the raid boss alongside the Thresh into the, into the front of the fight. And that's how you try and take this. There is a lot more clarity in terms of its win conditions. And I'm going to let the Jayos flow through me before I continue. Okay, I think we're, we're safe. Oh, Doinby actually might be picking up 300 wins in the LPL. Uh, yeah, uh, already achieved that, excuse me. I was thinking, oh, uh, wait a minute, it doesn't make sense to... to, to Given the congratulations <laughs> we in the, Yeah, I was like, they're, they're already preemptively being like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey this we like this nocturne. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, JDJ would probably complain if that was the case. But uh, congratulations for Doinby moving up to sixth in the uh, in the LPL historically. This is a man with a lot of history, two MVPs in two different years, and he's still going strong in 2021. Yeah, you got to feel like uh, Doombi, world champion, of course. Uh, and you just feel his charisma. I you can't look at or hear from Doombi and not feel just ecstatic and happy. He's just a really optimistic and kind of, you know, charismatic guy. And I think that's something that has stuck to FBX as a brand, as something that people like to kind of look towards. And we'll see now how he's able to do into this mid lane with the Nocturne. But... Oh, I'm so excited. Sorry, I'm just so, so excited for this because it can have, it's such a feature famine as well because you can have so much amazing, you know, kind of pickup for it. You can get super, super early uh, fed. You can either go with the Eclipse, of course, you can go with the Dustbringer. I personally prefer the Dustbringer just because it gets you in and out of situations if you're able to assassinate someone. But I still like this pick. I still like what they're going with this. And the cart just kind of fills into that as well. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting. I can't wait for that level six to actually happen. A huge part of it was that two second cooldown reduction on Q, as you've talked about. It actually spiked him in the jungle as well, but he didn't really make all that much of an appearance. And uh, we are going to see JD Gaming being very aggressive with this lane. You can punish uh, the Rel, and now they're going to get LWX. Yeah, LWX forced to back away huh. underneath his tower. Doesn't lose any summoners, but... The level 2 was hit, and that level 2 from the Thresh and the Aphelios is very, very potent. They should be able to get the LWX back. They should lose about maybe 6 or 7 minions, so it's exactly what you want from JDG in this bot side. Get the Aphelios ahead, make sure he's the one dictating the pace, and make sure he's the one dictating whereabouts they take the fights. Now we're going to do a number on to zoom in the top side, as is expected in the matchup. And we're going to be taking a look at the runes coming out from Nocturne. It's not the highest damage runes, more of a Bruiser-esque rune setup. He does take the Revolve Tree instead of going for more damage on Domination or the uh, or the Precision Tree as he has Precision as main. It is going to be the Conquerors. And uh, I think this is a bit slower to proc for Doinby and a bit more side lane focus. So uh, I do think we are going to see something like the Eclipse come out where it would make a little bit more sense, uh, I think. See what they want to go for. I'm very curious to see how he goes. I'm sure uh, Vedius is sitting there. You ever see the... the uh, did you ever watch... Um, Vedius' picks? Evangelion Neon Delis? Uh, yeah. No, no, uh, no, no, no. Did you ever see... I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't watch that. Uh, <laughs> don't watch no, that it's actually, it's actually a, it's, a, yeah. okay. it's a fantastic show. I, I do love when he brings it out. But I was going to say uh, Evangelion Neon Genesis. Have you ever seen that Oh, that yeah, anime? I've seen it. It's a huge part of my childhood. Yeah, you know that. You know the very famous scene where the guy who uh, is heading the facility is just like with his hands on his, uh, underneath his mouth and he's like got the, the double sheen on the glasses that's how i feel like vedius is looking at this game right now <laughs> like just like just the, not saying a word just like thinking thinking about whether or not doing is worthy of his pick that's what i feel <laughs> yeah if this is a nocturne pick fails i feel like he just scrubs the record from leagueopedia and pretends it never happened well, we'll see if they're able to make something happen to this bot side. Nice three-man knockoff, though, to keep LDF LWX alive. Does force the flash out of Crisp and the heal from LWX. Maybe a bit preemptive. Didn't really need to pop that one down. So advantage overall for JDG. They only expend the exhaust. They get themselves a flash out of Crisp and the heal out of LWX. It's absolutely huge for JD Gaming. And a very common draft strategy we have been seeing is the Thresh against the Rel. Not a lot of things that Rel can actually do. She's very easily disrupted by both the Death Sense and the uh, and the flake, excuse me. And uh, Loken also has the range and shove advantage. So a double counter lane for JD Gaming. And they've already picked up one plate on this. I, I want to see how they try and defend this lane. Because I think they still want to continue and shove. 
but with Doinby and Karthus's uh, ultimate coming up, it's going to be very dangerous for them to try and get more plates. Oh, Hook has landed. You see there, the Ferromancy has to be used by Crisp to get himself out. Zoom was being pressured in this top side. You can see he's already at a 10 CS disadvantage. Probably be about 6 or 7 by the time this wave crashes. But I like this from Beishuan as well, as we can see. Ooh, oh, stun. Maybe going for something Loken. <laughs> has to burn his flash and his heal just to get out in time. That is the power of Rel, especially if you take turret aggro. Uh, I will say that was a bit greedy from Loken. He saw the Hex Flash channel coming in from Chris. And then he just stood his ground and attacked her. <laughs> I was like, uh, well, if she's hex flashing, I assume there's only one way she's going to go. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it feels like uh, you just kind of have to know exactly where she's going to be going with that particular ability. Now, Paranoia has been picked up here by Doonby. He's immediately gone back, picked himself up what looks like the makings of a, an Iron Spike Whip. Sorry, he does have, exactly have the Iron Spike Whip. So now looking to push in that side wave, and straight away you can see double TPs, be, oh. or sorry, not the double TP, just a single TP bring in here, and as Luomao gets caught out a little bit, Doonby does not have a huge amount of mana. He's not let himself regen that one up ever so much while he went back trying to get as much of a play as he could but jdg are ready for it jdg are the ones here prepared to fight for this and those isolated skittles will do a hell of a lot of damage in this early game and i do want to talk about what has been happening in the mid lane i think doinby has done a really good job from preventing yagao to base we actually saw three interruptions coming in with the uh the Nar nocturne, uh, nocturne q already and that means this is a super late tier for yagao Usually you have Cheetah Recalls level 3, level 4. This is a level 6 tier pickup. So we have been seeing Doinby just constantly shoving out the wave. And what this does is it slows down Yagao's uh, AP, uh, AP scaling. And it also means that Beishuan has not been taking any harass whatsoever. He's sitting very comfortably at a three, uh, about a 2 and 3 camp lead on this Karthus without any counter jungling coming out from the graves. I'm very curious now because doombi has gone obviously with the stride break or sorry with the iron spike quick which means he's going to be either picking up the stride breaker or the gore drinker so very very curious to see where he goes with that one not sure if i agree with it we'll see how it works for him right now zoom gets jumped in actually puts himself behind nuguri there's a big old wave there for zoom that he needs to try and pick up should have his cues ready for himself in a second so should be able to pick up the majority of it but FBX, they're still feeling pretty confident now on this top side. You can see Beishuan just pushing in. Has such a huge CS advantage now. We'll have 20 once he takes this camp. And that just becomes so hard now for this Graves. Kanavi, you said you wanted to see him on something like this. As I mentioned, he doesn't really have the kind of same priority as he would with anyone else. And Graves, oh, here we go. First paranoia of the game. Just jump in straight in. It's going to be a try and get an assassination attempt. There is the double global effect. They get down, oh, he but he's not die. quite. He's back. No, no, oh. he's not quite in range. You can see it was so tantalizing. Yagao gets first blood, Doonby fails, and Vedius is disappointed. The concept was there, the execution a little bit lacking. Doonby goes in by himself, doesn't find it. We have action in the bot side. We're going to see them going in. Luomao takes another tower hit, though, so he is dead. Now it's a 2v1. Loken, though, has that chakras to be able to just keep going back and forth. Those combination of guns, the red and the white, makes it so difficult to take this man down. And that is an overall still a very good trade. Ooh, As I say that, they jump straight down. down in and get the double knockoff. They're trying to see if they can cake him out, and they should be able to. Crisp also survives. Nicely done by the FBX bot lane. Straight up 2v2. They come out with two kills. Crisp is a goddamn hero in that one. This lane has been, been pushed in this entire time, but he's still able to find those opportunities to kill Lumao and then go on to Loken. Very unexpected there, and unfortunately for Lumo, he did actually miss out on the last death sense, but I will give the action priority as Nuggery tries to go in on Zoom. Tries to, fails to, still 20 CS behind. You can see Nuggery just making the most out of this NAR pick in the second game, just pushing in Zoom constantly, has a level lead, has a massive CS lead as well. And you can see while he's underneath the tower, it becomes very difficult. He just gets a knock back in as well. Just trying to be as big a nuisance as he possibly can. And this is the annoying thing, I suppose, about someone like a NAR is that you get a, just a, a random steroid of health when you go into Mega. So you're just able to kind of take two, 300 gold of damage or 200 of damage or so every now and again without really kind of dying and getting punished for it it's just very infuriating yeah it's very difficult to actually uh 
get him down. And I do want to mention that was a really good trade coming in from Yagao. He senses the collapse incoming from Chris, is able to get the shield out from Doimbi just with his Dark Sphere, and then still find the shove. So well done on uh, Yagao's side, and so far that's two wins against Doimbi in this mid lane. Yeah, we'll see now what Doing B wants to go for. Did pop down towards that bot side, maybe looking for a paranoia play. It does have a very limited range at level level six, so the first rank. So you want to be getting to level eleven. That's when you can actually start opening up the map. But Kanavi now trying to see if he can punish the overstepping Nuggery. He's moving in towards this top side. Now he knows with the maximum distance he's able to put in there. Nuguri does not have a stun now and has mini form as well, but should be able to flash away and hop and skip his way out. Kanavi flashes forward, has the collateral damage, but does not land the end oh of the no. line and misses the collateral damage. He will still take the kill. That would be Zoom getting that one there, but they had to expend the flash on the Kanavi. They get the Requiem down, so they will not be able to push in this lane any further, and Doombi's already roaming up. Yeah, that was pretty damn close to disaster. If uh, Zoom didn't follow up on that one, it would have been just a walk away on the side for FBX. Nuggery doing a really good job at going back into the minion wave, dodging out most of the damage. And this is also another great facet about this team composition that I love from FBX. It's that you want Beitron to be that late game damage dealer. Beitron's damage is going to eclipse Doinbee's damage in the late game 100%. So having him actually just farm the mid lane while Doinbee roams is a very good answer before that paranoia can tick over to level 11. Well, with all the pressure up top side, you can see now FBX using their pressure on bot. They have Beishan getting up that kill onto the Dragon. So that's first strike of the game going over to FBX. They have that counter going. They've only got themselves a 500 gold lead. It's still fairly even in that regard. And again, more and more pressure being put down onto this Nocturne mid. And it's always something, when you pick something like this, when you pick something like a card, this Nocturne, it has to work. Otherwise, you just look silly. And I really want this to work, because I know that if it works, it'll just lead to so many more draft picks, so many more big brain moments for everyone when they play against FBX. It's going to be the highlight of this week in terms of drafting. I think this is the weirdest combo that we have seen so far uh, past the Lunar New Year. So I do hope it actually succeeds here. Um, but going into this bottom lane, I, I think this is the pressure point for JD Gaming. Even though they've lost a lot of kills here, this is currently the only lane where they can push out. And also, it sets them up into the 5v5. This is the comp that wants to go into those Drake situations. And we have, uh, we have, uh, JD Gaming actually, uh, actually was FBX take away the Drake just a little bit earlier there, the Ocean Drake being stuck away. But JD Gaming want to keep the pressure on the bot lane and make this 5v5 oriented. The Stride Breaker finished up here for Doombi, so it gives him it gives him a little bit of a gap closer, I suppose, to be able to set himself up. We can see now Yagao getting two. caught out by the paranoia. They don't know exactly where he is, but he's perfectly blocks the stun massive move there from Doimbi and this is the power you get with something like a Nocturne Beishron drops the Rift Herald up on top side but it's a ways away from this tower and that could mean Zoom might be able to go and try and fight this one you can see him just delaying it but now Doimbi has to play bodyguard has to play keep away Beishron does not get the oh. Oh, blue buff and they don't get the charge on the Herald either World Ender has been popped as Doombi flashes forward wants to try and follow this guy all the way to the ends of the earth but Zoom is able to keep himself alive just about until he is taken down that is two quick kills and we see is this deja vu i have been to this place before as again we're seeing the movement in this bot side lwx flash. perfect flash away from the uh, hook from thresh it flash in from loken is not going to be enough two kills both sides of the map fbx are online FBX get another double kill in the bot lane. Once again, Lumal goes too close to the tower, trying to push this one down, and they don't even need the Requiem to really finish that one up as they find another 2v2 kill. This is not supposed to happen. JD Gaming have drafted double counter picks in the bot lane, and FBX are simply outskilling them. And it's the same thing every time I said a deja vu underneath the tower. They just get one little auto attack and then instantly you can see Crisp going in. He has tower, turret aggro on someone and forces out all summoners as well. So they not only do lose their two lives, they lose two summoners. And if you see now Yagao moving in with Kanavi, they're going to try and see if they can punish Beishuan, but... Definitely a little bit risky to be doing that. Now Chris knows that Kanavi is here as he says hello to the rest of his Ooh, team. Tries to get the crash down, but a good interrupt with the scatter of the week means that Yagao is able to pick up his second kill. So he's keeping tit for tat in terms of the kill score with Doombi. 
That's what JD Gaming need to do and what they haven't been able to so far in this game. It's been Karthus counter jungling with this top Paranoia. lane pressure. And here it continues. Paranoia is just such a powerful global. When you're able to get ahead and at level 11, it means that you're leaving the mid lane for about three seconds, not even three seconds, maybe only two and a half seconds. And you're able to make that kind of an impact. Bot lane will fall in favor of JDG. So FBX will lose that particular one. But again, they trade back a kill. It's three kills to seven in favor of FBX. They've got themselves a 2000 gold lead or a 1500 gold lead. Towers are equal. The next fight is probably gonna be around this cloud drake as everyone starts to pick up their first mythic items. Yeah, and just looking at Beitran right here, he's going to go very comfortably into the Leandris. He hasn't been disrupted whatsoever. I, I like the way he's played out this jungle. He's tried to make it more of a vertical jungle situation where he goes into the top side of Kanavi with the help coming in from mid lane and the top lane just constantly shoving in. So this Kanavi Graves isn't going to work. Graves is a champion that has to stay ahead of the curve to be relevant. And in this scenario, he's not out farming the Kanavi. Uh, he's not out, out farming the Karthus. He's found no counter jungles in, and he's just going to be a bit useless in the late game. Well, Nuguri getting stunned up. Infernal Chains back him up as well. As Beishan might be forced to try and get out the back of his. Oh no, he can't. He does not have his flash. Excuse me. But now with the Killer Instinct and the Requiem being popped Oof. down, they're going to be able to pop Kanavi. Now Luimau is here, but Doombi's on the backside. Doombi, you're not very tanky. You need to be so, so careful. He gets one more kill. They get the Scatter of the Week. Doombi has to have Happy Feet. And he does indeed. Two kills over to Chris. This game is snowballing out of control for JDG. Like you said, they just haven't got any purchase while Whatsoever with their counter picks, and they are starting to bleed gold. JD Gaming haven't been able to find a single 5v5 before most of their players are picked, and here we go again with the stun. Here we go again. You can try and spell shield the turret shot. Doesn't quite work that way, doing B as Chris was not able to stun that one up. Like the idea, gets another kill. Shut down those go over to Yagao. So a nice little gold in his back pocket, but this Nocturne pick, you can see the assassination, this mid game, this one item spike is just so oppressive. Stripebreaker working really out in the back line as well. Let's see how Kanavi actually dies here. He was very healthy to start this one off. Chris comes in with the Magnet Storm. He's still at 80% health, about 60% after LWX does a number on him. But watch this as Doinby comes in. He still has a Stripebreaker to actually finish off the kill onto Loken. Very important. Uh, of an ability, especially when you're going up against the box coming out from uh, from Thresh. Well, now with Dragon spawning, Bayshawn is already on this. Has a blue buff, so should be pretty fine for mana. Chris might have to use the Ferromancy over the top side, gets the crash down in. But there are four people here for FB, or sorry, for JDG. FBX still yet to throw everybody in here just here just yet. Smite goes down, Kanavi on the backside does not have flash, does have nowhere to go, and it means they have to commit the teleport from the Aatrox. Now FBX getting that a global objective, getting that global teleport, will back themselves away, back into their own jungle, and will lose nothing. And honestly, this is FBX's game to, to, to lose. Like, they can play a lot of different ways. I think if they have Nuggery just in the side lanes, they have him force push and just make picks around there. They don't really want to go in the 5v5, but if they're far enough ahead, we actually have to be going straight in. There we go, the two shotguns in the backside. Doinby goes down, but it gave LWX a position to get here and to set himself up. He gets stunned, he gets flayed, he gets taken down. They go take the Ophelio, so it's AD carry for AD carry. Mid laner still alive. Karthus is now dead. He has got the Requiem. There's no magic resistance, and they should be able to clean up these kills. No problem whatsoever. It's a three for five, an ace for FBX. They overextend, but it doesn't matter. They're just too far ahead. Uh, I'm not sure that was worth it. That was pretty big shutdown code going over. LWX was 5-1-5. and five. So that's a huge chunk of gold uh, that JD Gaming are actually picking up. And if I were to do that again, I, I, if I was on FBX and I knew the results, I wouldn't go for that play. I, I think that play is actually a bit of a throw. Well, we'll see how they're going to go for it here. And you can see they just want to go in. There's one shotgun. Boom. Now let's put the second person in. Boom. And that's kind of the combination that we didn't even think about when they came in with this comp. Yeah, the problem here is that only two members can go into the backline coming in from FBX. Zoom does a very good job zoning out the Karthus, so he never actually finds purchase here. And JD Gaming are able to scrap themselves back. Zoom picks up a number of kills. We have mentioned because FBX are, were ahead, so there was a lot of big shutdown uh big shutdowns going over to jd gaming and i don't think they come out of that too too poorly honestly well they'll take the gold they're still about four thousand behind they have a dragon 
in three minutes that they probably need to try and set up. Aishwan has got the Rift Herald. He's kind of learn running out of time with that one. So he needs to drop that one pretty much immediately. You probably see him drop it out now. Or otherwise, it's just gone from his inventory. Uh, and that will just be a wasted objective. Uh, there it is. Drop there now towards the mid lane as they try to just coerce it towards that tower. Maybe get a charge. Probably not, if we're being honest. And... Uh, yeah, FBX, a uh, little overzealous, a little bit uh, happy, shall we say, <laughs> is the TP being committed here. That's going to be Doing B, and they get the Rift Herald charge off, and they actually get the tower. So despite the little bit of panic nature here of dropping down the Rift Herald, they get an objective from it, and you'll take that. It's the mid-tier too. Now, I like this play coming in from FBX. They're just uh, creating distance in mid lane and making sure that they can take the bot lane tower unperturbed. No one's going to be able to stop this one coming in. And this is how I want them to play. I want Nuggery to be away from the composition and FPX to try and glide around and find uh, fights where they can use killer instincts and they can use paranoia to get numbers advantages. I don't think 5v5s is the answer here. It's giving a window to JD Gaming. They should avoid that at all costs and make this a, a bit of a smoother game. When you've got the Nocturne, and it's exactly as you say, like you should be, you know, putting Nuggery in a side lane. He is very much ahead of Zoom, so he should be able to just like, harass him down. And then you just hover with the Nocturne. If you're able yep. to kind of keep that one going and keep them underneath their tower, you have the Requiem, you have the Nocturne Paranoia. You can join between mid and bar or mid and top, whichever one you decide. And he also has a teleport in his back pocket as well once it comes off cooldown. So there are options for you just to get picks and looking down the board, like who's gonna who's gonna be able to defend themselves against this, you know, Nar Nocturne combo? No one has any resistance whatsoever outside of a couple of boots. JD Gaming drafted for mid jungle priority. It didn't really happen and now they have to face the music as Loka goes in very, very far. Ooh, so, so careful. So, so lucky that he has the Thresh Dark Passage, a lantern to click himself away. And that's why this Nocturne pick is so... You have to respect it. It's not the greatest in the world. You obviously need to know what you're doing for it. Now to say that, Paranoia gets dropped in and they jump straight in on top of the Graves, who has to flash and use everything to get out alive. And again, more and more summoners being burned, more and more advantages being garnered because of this Nocturne's pressure. And this is just a straight Baron call. The jungler doesn't have flash. He can't come in. Collateral damage also expended. So he's not going to have a lot of tools to get into this Baron pit. And we see JD Gaming coming in, but they don't have a lot of engage. It's very difficult for them to actually knock people back. And the Baron's going to go down to FBX. Yeah. There we go. Rec Room coming down. They're trying to get on top of Loken, who's taking so, so low. Flashes heals, but it is not enough to keep him alive. And Gnar to keep three people going into the mid lane and to keep this fight going. Lumao keeping himself alive, but a double kill over to the Kaiser. It's going to be a full ace after the Baron. Doonby going to go back just to reset. They've got Dragon up in seven seconds. This game is all but done. Yeah, it's a bit sad that uh, FBX aren't going to be able to find the fastest game of the split so far. Sooning still have them beat, but it's pretty damn close as they are just going to strip mine uh, JD Gaming's entire base for resources here. Uh, very difficult to see what JD Gaming could actually have done in that situation. They probably had to, to Hail Mary fight it. They were very far behind. But they also just don't have the engage to, to make FPX think twice about things. And they don't have the damage to dissuade either. So FPX with a very, very clean turnaround. Good timers being used right here. And Nuggery being willing to just flash forward with the Stripe Baker and finding the kills. Good play by LWX here as well as he uses the Gale Force for the execute damage. And we can see Zoom isn't even really in this play. He was very far behind in the top lane, has to, has to walk over here and he finds himself amongst five, nowhere to go. Yeah, well, the jungle is no longer yours, JDG. You need to play respectful, you need to play defensively, and you need to back the hell away from these side lanes. You have to go straight away from your base into the lanes. You cannot go through the jungle. You just do not have the pressure to be able to make that happen. Doonby is here. They forced the TP out of the Syndra, so Yagao does not have that available to him, and that's honestly exactly what they wanted. They get yeah, everything in terms of global pressure. They just have Zoom left on his TP. This is just becoming harder and harder for JDG. As you can see now, Beishuan pushing in towards this mid lane, trying to get as much pressure as he can. The one thing I will say that the Baron doesn't really do a lot for FBX. They have got pressure. They will be able to kind of just like shred and thin, but they are very low range in terms of how they can take these turrets down. So once you start hitting the inhibitor turrets, which with this last turret going down, that's pretty much where we're going to be. It's very difficult for FBX to actually get any purchase with this Baron buff because it's very easy for the side of JDG to clear it away. Definitely. I think FBX need to go for a split push situation like they are doing with Doinby right now. Uh, Doinby is level 15 and oh no, we have a catch. 
We do have a catch. Karthus is dead. Does he drop down the rec room? Yes, he does. He has gone into full zombie mode. As we can see now, they're jumping straight in. Yes, they got a catch, but everyone else is dead. The final kill of this game will go over to Doonby on this Nocturne mid. Six, three, and nine. A very happy Vettius smiles from ear to ear as he sees a positive win rate for the Nocturne mid. And with that, Baron Buff still ticking for a couple of seconds. You imagine that's going to be the game now for FBX. We talked about how JDG were not really looking the strongest. And in this series, in less than an hour, they are dispatched, they are taken out, and they are thoroughly beaten by FBX. This wasn't even close coming out from JD Gaming. A matchup where JD Gaming had FBX's number throughout Spring Split postseasons. And now FBX has cracked the curse. As we see Doinby giving a good old handshake to Nuggery as they win in dominating fashion here on the Rift. Very big win here, you can imagine, for FBX after what was a uh, an uncharacteristic loss, shall we say, um, for them against uh, earlier in the week. And honestly, I'm very happy to see them get this one here. It, it cements them back as a very, very big uh, carry and very big threat within the LPL. And the more top tier teams we have, the better the playoffs and our you know international representation is going to be. Yep, bit of a disappointing game here. Uh, again, I did have some issues with the draft. I felt like Syndra and uh, Aatrox were not really the picks to go for. The Aatrox, uh, Zoom basically countered himself. Nuggery already selected the NAR, so he went for what he was comfortable with, as we've mentioned in pregame, but it just didn't have any impact. It was constantly behind, and uh, I feel like I would have preferred Galio plus the, uh, plus the Camille to come out here. It would be a better catch combination. You could punish the, uh, the Karthus a little better. None of that really happened, and FPX were able to maintain priority throughout their solo lanes this entire game, and that meant Karthus was able to farm up a storm. Beichuan never meant graves in his own jungle, so that's just... That's uh, I was going to say, like, Beichuan had no pressure on him whatsoever. Like, they just never got to a point where they could even stop this Karthus from farming. In fact, he had so much priority in that top side that he was able to farm the, you know, the, the graves jungle, and the fact that he was able to steal blues, gromps, he was able to stay on the map and just accrue gold for himself. I got to give props to Nuggery and Doonby, and of course, uh, you know, pretty much all the lanes. This yep. game and this last game was just one from the laning phase. Like, the early game that we know FBX have or the early game that they're able to, you know, kind of garner for themselves just meant that they were just so far ahead of JDG that JDG just never had a chance to come back in both series, in both games of the series. You don't steal the mo from the Mafia without backing. And that bottom lane was a, was a really good backer coming out from them. Uh, we saw JD Gaming actually having a really good time in the bottom lane in the early phases, but it was just so many mistakes from Lumal and Loken. A lot of uncharacteristic, uncalled for mistakes that lost them the 2v2 twice in a row. So, uh, you know, with that going sideways, the rest of the draft also really dependent on that bot lane priority or for, for them to move around the map, just stripping towers down. That didn't happen, and it was all FBX all the way. Really good creative drafting coming out from them, and I think this is a nice answer to the 5v5 team fights. If you have a pick composition like that, I think we are seeing FBX actually indexing into something different than everyone else. <clears throat> than everyone else. Yeah, and you can see the damage graph here. It actually wasn't even Doombi doing the most quote-unquote damage. It was Beishuan who was kind of, you know, dead and then just kept popping down the rec rooms. But that was all he needed to do. It actually is such a perfect pick to combo with something like the Nocturne because you're not there to be, you know, the 100% carry. You're just there to do enough damage so the rest of your team can, you know, jump into the back line. We saw it there with the Killer Instinct, the Paranoia. They're able to get in onto the back line. Everyone's already less than half HP and it, ju it just works. I wonder if the last team fight was a Beishuan engage. Do you think that could be considered as a Karthus engage? <laughs> um, I'd have to look up the definition. I'd have to look up the definition to be 100% sure, but it definitely, if there was ever an argument for one to be called a, a Karthus engage, quote unquote, I think that one would definitely be it. And uh, for JDG, they're now six and four. They probably will still make playoffs, but Oof. It's just oof right now for me because they are they, they just don't look good. They look lost. I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in this team because, again, they just changed nothing. They had the exact same lineup. They even brought in two extra people to say, look, if, if say, Yagao and Loken aren't performing that well, we'll bring in Shie and Mist or sorry, uh, yeah, Shie and Mystic, excuse me, and it, it, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like they're kind of working with either of them, and, and it doesn't seem to be kind of clicking for them. Yeah, there's a lot of blame to p go around uh, from JD Gaming, from draft to execution. Uh, the main thing, the main worry for me is, will JD Gaming actually find a facet of the game that they're actually excelling at? 
they were very good in brawler-esque team fights, but right now it looks like a lot of teams are choosing not to engage with them. They just pick something scaling, they sit back and say, hey, you know what, JD Gaming, if you go for the Herald, we'll take the turret plates, that's fine. We just don't want mm -hmm. you to accelerate the game with uh, with these uh, Herald skirmishes. And I think that's a very good answer to JD Gaming style. I'll be honest, JD Gaming as a team is at the top of the league almost solely because of the environment